Hey, it's James Mulvaney. Welcome back to part two of getting booked onto 30 podcasts within 30 days. If you haven't watched part one, I'd recommend you go back and see that. I'll put a link on the screen now so you can do that. In part one, we cover over exactly how to write a pitch and how to identify podcasts that you think you could deliver value to as a guest, and also how to use the matchmaker.fm platform to go out and find those podcasts and really start to refine and build lists of which podcasts you think would be great. In this video, I want to show you really the logistics of everything that's going on behind the scenes. How do you stay organized? How do you make sure you're turning up for your recordings on time? And you know, how do you actually just track which podcasts are now live and which ones you've been on? All of that and more coming up in today's video. So let's get cracking. Okay, before we dive into the organization and how to actually coordinate your podcast tour, there are three key points I wanted to quickly raise and address. These are things that I've learned that perhaps weren't as obvious to me before I got started. Number one, organization and timekeeping and cancellations. Now, it's safe to say people have got stuffed on, right? They're not always doing a podcast as their primary source of income or their primary business. So a lot of people have podcasting as like a side hustle or something they do in their spare time or something that they do to complement an existing marketing strategy. Thus, the podcast isn't always number one priority and people do rearrange, they have to cancel on you. Now I'd say maybe 10 to 15% of podcasts were either no-shows, they had to cancel and reschedule, and the way those that often rescheduled did actually then turn up the next time. There were obviously a few that I didn't hear back from and nothing really materialized, which at the time is quite frustrating because you're like, oh, I'm nearly at this 30 target, I've only got five more to do, and then three are no-shows or three cancel on you, and then you obviously have to book more podcasts or different ones to kind of fill that gap. I think the main thing is you have to be patient here. I kind of assumed maybe if I booked 30, in it, all 30 would be recorded and all 30 would go live. I probably ended up recording more like 40 to 50 podcasts or scheduling 40 to 50 podcasts. I ended up recording around 40 and some people, you know, we just didn't hear back from or they cancelled and, you know, they've said they're putting it on hold. So I think patience is important. Uh, sometimes people have to reschedule. It can be quite frustrating if you've got, say, three podcasts blocked out throughout the day. It means you really you've not got much else on that day apart from recording podcasts. Um, you have to be flexible with your time and this is why I said I'm just going to do it in 30 days because I know during that 30 day period I haven't got a lot of other stuff going on. If you're busy and you just don't have time to do this then I'd say wait till a month is kind of free-ish so you can kind of really give it your all for a month. Okay so next up I would say you've got to try and keep it unique, keep it fresh and make each podcast slightly different. If you just do the same spiel on each podcast it becomes a little bit dull. I'll put a link down here uh, to another video I created, which is called How to Be a Good Guest. And there's 10 different points, I think, in that video, which talk you through exactly how you should be a good guest. If you're not sure, or maybe you're new to this, got some good pointers for you there. I'll put a link on the screen. Thirdly, you need to be super organized. You need to have a calendar. And as I mentioned before, we're gonna show you exactly how to do all this now. I use a tool called Harmonizely. Let's dive in and I wanna show you exactly how I coordinated this whole effort. All right, so let's dive into the computer. I wanna show you exactly how I organized and coordinated this entire project. Now, here you can see um, my inbox on Matchmaker and I contacted a show called The Advertising Hour, all right? Um, this is just brand new actually, the guy who's just started, it's called Scott, uh, had a great recording with him I think uh, early May, this was one of the earlier ones I recorded. Obviously you can see here this pitch that we discussed in the previous video. If you've not seen the previous video by the way, I'll put a link to it on the screen now so you can go and check that out. I talk about how to write an effective pitch, how to use Matchmaker to find shows that are relevant for what you want to talk about as a guest. Or if you're a podcaster, you can sign up to Matchmaker and use it to find great guests as well. Uh, but go check out video one because I kind of explained the initial process. So we get a response from um, the, the podcast that we're potentially interested in being on. Uh, what was great about Scott is he actually said he, he was already recording another podcast called the Internet Marketing Podcast. Would I like to be on that as well? And I was like, of course I would, yeah. Uh, so we put two dates in to record. Now my process for doing this is really straightforward. Uh, you can see here, I, I send them a unique link which takes them to this page, okay? Now this is um, a calendar booking system that I use. I'll run through a couple of options in a second. Uh, and it's really straightforward. This is what the person who wants to book in with me to record will see. So they'll choose a date. Um, they will then choose a time slot and then they will come enter their name 
frames, the details, and also how they want to record uh, or anything like that in here. Once this booking has been inserted into my diary, it will actually sync then with my calendar. And as you can see here, I have uh, a couple of recordings lined up uh, the day after tomorrow so they look like this I've got it all hooked up to my Apple desktop calendar this is actually connected directly to my Google calendar as well this means two things not only does it uh, show me when these events have been booked on my calendar and I have it synced across all my devices but also it looks at what events I already have so so for example I've booked a day out of the office it won't allow people to schedule podcasts on that day I could also specify certain criteria such as you know allowing people to book between say 9 a.m. and 5 30 p.m. I don't want to be recording you know in the middle of the night time or if I don't want to record on specific days of the week I can block them out as well. Now the tool I used to do this is called Harmonizely. Um, I believe they have a free plan. I've been with them for a few months. In the past I've used Calendly before. There's also Actuity Scheduling. These services all do uh, they're very much the same thing. They're great, you know, they make it so so much easier than the old school way of, oh, are you free on this day? You know, are you free on that day? Blah, blah, blah. So basically you just send someone a link it shows in their time zone, which makes it really easy for them. Again, when you're recording podcasts, many of the podcasts I recorded weren't in the UK. A lot of them were in the US, some were in Australia, etc. Uh, really all over the world so it's important that you have your time zones in sync and tools like these just make it really straightforward to do so so once i've got the recording in uh, i then mark them off the screen now this is a way of organizing podcast you see i have this prospect list i have my three tabs along the bottom i have uh, marketing and sales startup and entrepreneurs and personal branding and motivational stuff these were the categories that i defined of podcasts that i wanted to sort of target in my initial pitches the ones here in green, the ones that have actually been recorded. These ones are obviously uh, other podcasts that we contacted and perhaps they didn't get, we didn't get response from them or uh, they weren't interested or whatever. It's the ones with green that we know have actually been recorded. Um, again, if you look here, I just sort of take you through the, the columns. I've got podcast name, the link so I can check it out. Uh, the contact name of the person who's on the podcast and their matchmaker URL. So, you know, if I actually want to find one of the, the podcasts and review it, I can click on that link and I can just go straight back into matchmaker. The date contacted. So this is basically the, the first date we actually outreach to them. And I didn't do all of this myself. I had Graham who produces a lot of these videos for me um, helping me out with this. Then the date it was scheduled. And also if we have a, had a response from the podcaster as to when it was going live. Uh, and also then we kind of got a bit sloppy here, but the live URL. So, you know, when you actually you go live you can click on it and see i've been pretty uh, pretty bad about updating this as you can see but um, these are a handful of the podcasts that are now live uh, in the personal branding and motivation next up i'll take you to my big list now again i've just got a google doc here both me and graham have got access to this this is just a kind of because i think sometimes these spreadsheets can get a bit crazy you know when you especially when you have like loads of entries and columns this is just a simple list of every single time i finished recording a podcast i just stick down the person's name and their podcast name right um so for example the advertising hour which I showed you before this show has now gone live okay so I'll put that in bold so anyone any show that is in bold we know that's actually gone live and you know if we want to find that's just easy enough to search it on Google and you can find it I just found this list was an easy way of working versus just constantly relying on spreadsheets you know kind of clean and simple and also it's kind of good to see when I was getting towards 30 I was like yes we're nearly here um, so yeah thanks to Sean and shout out to all of these guys we're gonna put a little bit of a montage in after this just to show you some of the podcasts that I got featured on and uh, thank you to everyone who has been involved in this challenge so there we go 30 podcasts in 30 days I actually ended up doing more like 40 podcasts in 30 days went really well work like a charm I'd fully recommend uh, going on a podcast tour if you've got a new product to promote if you're releasing a book if you're trying to grow your audience or you know just trying to make people more aware of your business or your services podcast tour is a perfect way of doing it and I had a great time in the process I met some awesome people and no doubt I've met some contacts that will be very useful for me moving forward with my uh, journey and my businesses and also um, you know just generally built rapport with loads of fantastic people doing some awesome things so I wanted to quickly give some kudos to every single podcast that was kind enough to have me on now let's cut to a little montage I want to show you the podcast that I were featured on give you some clips and also um, give you a bit of behind the scenes looks of how I actually was recording them I guess and that that concludes this video well so thanks to all of the podcasts that had me on i'll put a link to every single episode that's live below some episodes still aren't live but we'll update that list as and when we can all right thanks to these guys take it easy 
This is Fresh Start Podcast. I'm Dave Henning, and today my guest is James Mulvaney. Uh, great to meet you in person. Uh, we've been working together for well over a year, uh, so thank you for being with me. Welcome. No problem. Thank you very much for having me, David. It's a pleasure to be here. Business bros! Business bros! <laughs> <laughs> Thinking about the future is kind of almost a habitual thing. So some people constantly in the future, some people are constantly in the past, and it's important to kind of bridge those into the present kind of mindsets. But yeah. I think that as an entrepreneur, we have to kind of be more future focused, even if yes. we need to be present. Well, when okay, I first I started, I, yeah. had, I, I was designed, I, I learned how to use Photoshop and I was kind of learning Dreamweaver and a bit of HTML uh-huh. and kind of, I was just doing odd jobs, you know, I was like a, uh, like a handyman for the internet. So I was designing, uh-huh. remember the little animated banners that used to be on all the websites, you don't yeah. see them as much now, but I was designing them for a period. Um, and for a 16 year old kid, you know, I was getting paid like $50 here, hundred dollars. I was like, wow, this is like loads of money. When I do the podcast, they've all been in person until obviously COVID-19 happened. Yes. And for me, I love being in the same room with someone, the energy, like the way yeah. they used to talk, like, I do feel like it is a bit different when you can actually see the person interacting with them fully. Yeah. But at the same time, it all also has led me to opening up who I do the podcast with. Well, exactly. You know, I'm doing these 30 podcasts in 30 days. And the guy I spoke to this morning uh, was in Australia, uh, you know, and I think that's kind of part of the benefit of, of being able to, to do podcasting, you know, is it, it allows you to expand your mind and speak to lots of people that you wouldn't normally get to speak to. Stuff, James, really appreciate you coming on. Um, you get the song at the end as well. I'm not, yeah. Great, goodbye to end the show. <laughs> Thank you, James. Cheers, Jason. Thanks very much for having me. Thanks. Thanks.